PlayStation 5 pre-orders have people on the internet going absolutely crazy, and now Walmart is adding to this confusion and desperation with their latest decision. And are more N64, GameCube, and Wii games coming to the Nintendo Switch? At first, I didn't think much of this story, but new information has been revealed that definitely has me changing my tune on it. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, but without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. Now obviously we have been talking a lot about PlayStation 5 pre-orders because, well, a lot of people are very frustrated with this situation and I can totally understand why. Sony of course told people that they would have plenty of advance notice to get their pre-orders in for the PS5 and well, they, they didn't. Like many, many websites listed their pre-orders right after the Sony PS5 event wrapped up and of course all these websites ended up running out very quickly. Some of these websites even crashed if you tried to go to GameStop's website they had to block everyone from visiting their website. Walmart and Target and Best Buy were all sold out within seconds, and it was just an absolutely crazy and ridiculous situation to try and get a PlayStation 5 pre-order because it looked like there was no planning going into when these pre-orders were going to go live. Amazon is now telling many people who pre-ordered through them that they probably aren't getting their system on launch day. And yes, this is first world problems, but I mean, it's also video games, so we gotta talk about it. But the latest call culprit of shenanigans has to be Walmart though, as the past 24 hours have just been very interesting for good old Wally World. Now before we get into what happened with Walmart, now before we get into what happened with Walmart, let's first talk about the fact that Sony has actually come out and apologized for the PlayStation 5 pre-order situation, saying that they basically screwed up and that there will be more systems available this upcoming week, but they didn't really give any sort of exact dates or times or which stores would have these pre-orders. So I'm kind of worried about this. Obviously with Microsoft, they have a very clear plan of when you can get an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S. There's a date, there's a time, there's different retailers that are going to be happening with this, but Sony isn't really doing it. You know, it is good that there are going to be more pre-orders available, hopefully for actual potential customers and not scalpers who were able to get their hands on these systems because it's just absolutely crazy over on eBay. But of course, these scalpers are now making bots to pre-order things on websites and it's just really making for a bad situation. But let's get back to Walmart because yes, all of what I just said is relative to the Walmart situation. Walmart was of course one of the first places to put up the pre-order for the PlayStation 5 after the Sony event, and that's where I ended up getting my PlayStation 5 from, the physical version of it, of course, because I want my cheap used games. I don't want to I don't want to pay $70 for a new game. Like I get why the games are $70. I still don't want to pay it though. Now, many people have gotten emails from Walmart about cancellations for their pre-orders, but I did not. So I'm going to assume that everything is good with my pre-order for the system until I hear otherwise. But Walmart announced that they would be doing but Walmart announced that they would be doing in-store pre-orders for the PS5 on September 22nd so that people that missed out on the online stuff could get them in stores. And you know what? I thought this was a good decision. Obviously, you're getting people in your local community the chance to get the system. You don't have as many scalpers. Yes, there will be scalpers that will be trying to pre-order the system in store, but you don't have to worry about stupid things like bots and technology doing all the scalping. So I thought this was a good decision and something that more stores should be trying to do. Obviously, GameStop tried to do it and they ran out very quickly but Walmart seemed to be in a good position with this but but then they, they completely changed their mind and you no longer can get a PlayStation 5 pre-order at your local Walmart on September 22nd in an email that was sent over to GameSpot's website they basically said Walmart has decided to not proceed with the planned store pre-order to control store traffic and keep our customers safe and socially distanced customers can still get the console on November 12th when it's released apologies for any confusion once again, this is just another situation of a retailer just being so stupid with this. Like, how hard is this? How hard is it to set a date, to set a time for when people can pre-order a system? If you want to go the socially distanced route, just make little things. You know, when you look at stores and whatnot, when you go to check out at a store, you got to stay within a certain distance from someone, which is something we should have been doing always from since the dawn of time. Like, why are people just rubbing up against you at the checkout line? But you could just distance people and have them stand within a certain area 
area and like it wouldn't be that big of a deal I don't know man it's just it's very frustrating and I feel bad for people who weren't able to get their PlayStation 5 pre-order through all of these websites because of just how poorly Sony handled this but it seemed like Walmart was going to be one of this bastions of hope because everyone has a Walmart nearby but now they're not doing any in-store pre-order so the situation just gets crazier I'm sure Sony will hopefully make some sort of announcement this week about when these new PlayStation 5 pre-orders are going to be available but yeah I've said PlayStation PlayStation 5 PS5 and pre-orders a lot in this segment but it needed to be said man it needed to be said and finally more N64, GameCube, and Wii games on the Nintendo Switch. Sounds like a pipe dream, sounds like something that everyone wants, sounds like something that would make perfect sense for Nintendo to do, so of course it's probably not going to happen, but we did somewhat get some N64, GameCube, and Wii games on the Nintendo Switch recently with Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, I've actually talked about Super Mario 3D All-Stars, I don't know, maybe once or twice on this channel, maybe a few more times than that, like who, who really knows, but of course one of the videos that we talked about going over the Super Mario 3D All-Star stuff was the fact that this compilation is using slightly modified emulation and the emulators to run these three games. When it comes to the N64 emulator that was used, data miners who got the game early because of course it leaked online before it hit stores quickly noticed something very interesting within the files of the source code. There were render files for several N64 games such as Kirby 64, Perfect Dark, Pokemon Snap, among others. Now this was quickly written off as leftover source code from the Wii U's N64 emulator that made the transition to the Nintendo Switch. And yes, it does appear that the Perfect Dark render was a part of that as well from the Wii U. So at some point in time, Perfect Dark was actually potentially coming to the Wii U, at least it was up and running as far as the emulator is concerned. Still though, this sparked a lot of curiosity as to why Nintendo just didn't clean up the code and remove these files if there wasn't potential for more N64 games to come to the Nintendo Switch via something like the Nintendo Switch's online service. Because of this, that was the reason I didn't really talk about it when it was first discovered, because it appeared that it was just, like I said, leftover code. But now I might be changing my tune a bit with this, because things have actually gotten very, very interesting with the GameCube and Wii emulator situation, and I'm starting to think that there's a bit more to this than initially meets the eye. Now, of course, we learned that the GameCube slash Wii emulator was an in-house emulator called Haggy, H-A-G-I, that was done by Nintendo Europe Research and Development Team, which is also known as Nerd, which, well, that just makes me think of that silly scene from Metal Gear Solid 2. Anyways, good old data miner Oatmeal Dome on Twitter, who we have referenced many times before on this channel, make sure you guys give him a follow, discovered something very interesting with the Haggy emulator. It wasn't just built for Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Galaxy. Essentially, it was discovered that this emulator has additional GPU features that both Sunshine and Galaxy don't need and don't use. The first one is something called Bounding Box, which was mainly used for the Paper Mario games. Of course, A Thousand Year Door and Super Paper Mario released on the GameCube and the Wii respectively. The second one is something called Z Freeze, which is used in games like Mario Power Tennis, Mario Strikers, and Rogue Squadron 2. Now, does this necessarily mean that these games are coming? No, not necessarily at all. But it is interesting how both the N64 and the GameCube slash Wii emulator are essentially future-proof to run specific games that require a bit more than a standard emulator would provide. If the plan was simply to release these three Mario games on the Nintendo Switch, what would be the point in adding in these extra features into the emulators that are being used on the Switch? Especially considering the fact that we know that the GameCube slash Wii emulator emulator was designed specifically for these games, but now it appears that it supports more games as this was a new emulator. Doing a quick search on the internet, it seems like Z-Freeze was something that even the ever popular Dolphin emulator had issues with up until 2016, so it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to program. Is this a sign that Nintendo is adding N64, GameCube, and Wii into the Nintendo Switch's online service? You know, at first I didn't think much of it, but the more you look at the situation, and the more information that we're getting on it, it seems that there's more than meets the eye with this. Could there potentially be upgrades to the Nintendo Switch Online service? I know people would absolutely love it. It's something that people have been clamoring for. Now, it might not necessarily mean that these specific games are coming, but I do think that there's something else going on with this than we initially thought it was. What do you guys think about this situation, though? Be sure to let me know in the comments section down below. 
All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Have you managed to get your PlayStation 5 pre-ordered? Did you plan on going to Walmart on September 22nd? Are you mad at Walmart now? Because, well, really, you should be. It's kind of a shitty thing to do. And what do you think about the N64, GameCube, and Wii potentially coming to the Nintendo Switch? Like I said, I didn't think much of the story initially because it was just leftover source code from the N64 stuff, supposedly. But now with the GameCube and Wii stuff, you definitely have to look at it with a closer eye. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.